Hello and welcome. I'm going to close this a little bit so the light's not too distracting. Welcome. Thank you for joining me. If you're on this early, you're probably watching the replay, so give me a hashtag replay. Uh, my name is Evelyn Knight. I am the Child Care Business Coach. I'm the host of the Child Care Business Coach podcast and the founder and CEO of Child Care Business Professionals, uh, which is a company that helps child care owners and directors learn how to mainstream their systems and processes and how to really run a business and be successful while maintaining quality of proven strategy, strategies that are research-based. I'm also a child care center owner, so I know what it's like to be in the trenches and to own a child care center. So today I wanted to talk to you guys and just kind of give you a debriefing on uh, my question and answer time that I had with the Senator uh, Catherine Cortez Masto. Senator Masto asked to speak with me and a couple other uh, professionals about what is going on in, with child care centers and what's happening in the United States right now and just the health of our industry. So she was really questioning why, why we need the help. Why is it that we're struggling and why do we think that we need more funding? And I really had to just break down and explain it to her. And, and one of the things I really want you guys to understand and the thing I want you to think about um, and get into perspective is the powers that be out there right now and our government officials don't understand what we're really going through and what uh, why we're struggling. Okay, so we really need to be very vocal on what is holding us back and why we're struggling. One of the questions that she asked me is if I went from 110 kids a day to 27 children a day, why didn't my bills go down? That was literally one of the questions she asked me on like, why is it that my expenses didn't go down and why didn't it reflect 27 children instead of 110, right? And I had to explain to her like, well, I mean, just like households, if you got unemployed, right, your bills don't go down, it doesn't change. And as a business owner, that's no different for our centers. Whether you're a director who's running the financials or you're an owner, our bills do not go down, right? We still have the same lease payments. And even if your landlord deferred your lease, there was a period that that payment was due. Nobody made our leases magically go away. They just were deferred. But for most of you out there, by June, the end of June, you had to pay all that back. So to a certain extent, we were better off just paying our normal lease so that we didn't have to have a huge bill at the end of June, right? So that was something I explained to her. And one of the things I pointed out to her is that the only way we can control expenses is by laying off our employees or by cutting ourselves out. As an owner, what, you know, one of the first, my first instincts and the first thing I did do was cut my own pay, right? And then I was able to reassess. I had my financial advisor come in and tell me, okay, wait, you don't need to do that. You're okay, you set yourself up. But that's really, I mean, if I hadn't set myself up for that, right? If I hadn't planned ahead and I didn't have that savings, the only way I can save money is by not paying myself or laying off my staff or both, right? And the last thing our political officials want to hear is that we're laying off staff. They don't want to be responsible for that. They don't want to be responsible for the unemployment rates. So I really said that to, to stress to her and to help her to understand that those are the only honest to God, viable expenses we have. And I explained to her that whether I have 110 children in my building or 27, I still have to run the air conditioner, right? I, it, it still has to run. I still have to, you know, run the power, the water, all of that is still running. I may have less food to buy, but that's subsidized anyway. So that's not really coming out of my center's pocket so much. So I think that's just really important that we need to get the word out. And, you know, I was able to talk to the Senator here in Nevada. But what I really would encourage you guys is we need to talk to the senators and the Congress people around every state in this country right now to let them know what we need, right? If we're going to sustain this. 
some of the things that she mentioned to me is that they do not think there's going to be a vaccine until March, anywhere from March to June of next year. So she said, you know, how can you guys sustain another drop? So if we go through a major nationwide shutdown like we did in March, which apparently she, for, according to her, they are expecting. And also if we keep just kind of trucking along like we are now with the ratios that we have to uh, adhere to the group sizes, how are we gonna make that work, right? Can we sustain until anywhere from March till June? And I basically told her, you know, with the people, my clients, no, I don't think, I mean, even I, I have a good savings and I explained to her, you know, that when, um, traditionally we're all taught to save three to six months worth of our operating expenses. But when you're talking a year, I mean, if we go till June, we're looking at more than a year. Is a, is six months going to last us, right? Without help, are we going to make it? And I know the majority of childcare centers that are privately owned are literally making it month to month. They don't have enough money. Some of you guys out there don't have enough money to make it past a week, let alone June of next year. You know, and right now you're getting to the ends of your reserves. I told her I really, I'm seeing a huge trend in childcare centers that are not coming back. They're not opening at all. And uh, at centers that are still closed and owners that are terrified to open again. So just really sh getting her to see the reality. So one of the things I would encourage you guys, if you reach out and I am going in the notes, I will put like how to get a hold of your senators, how to get a hold of your Congress people. Um, but what you really need to do is make sure they understand that this situation is dire, right? They need to know that what we need is funding, okay? Don't sugarcoat it. Don't say, you know, I know it's not about the money. No, it is. It is about the money. Let them see what it really is, right? That, yeah, I have savings and I could tap in. You know, I've, I've talked to one owner who put her husband's 401k. She drained her husband's 401k to keep her center going. Another one is taking a second on her house to keep her center going right? Well, what happens if it doesn't? And then they don't have that 401k. They've lost their house. Their house is now tied to that. You know, those are the kind of things that we just, we need to make sure that they see the reality. They need to hear the harsh reality of what's happening out there. So don't try to sugarcoat it. I know I sound dramatic, but sometimes we need a little bit of that drama in order to get them to understand the big picture. I hear from so many of you guys, so many owners every week, and the absolute desperation that I'm hearing is really what I tried to get through to uh, my, just to the people out there and to help them to really understand and see what we're hearing and I'm seeing as somebody with my podcast I hear and then these live videos and my Facebook group and uh, my YouTube channel, I'm just hearing from so many people every week and it just really wanted to convey that desperation. So I'm going to be looking at my computer because I have notes here, but there is an act that is going through the Senate right now. And as of right now, it is a bipartisan act. So let's hope it stays that way and let's hope it goes through. It is called uh, the Child Care is Essential Act. And it is uh, HR 7027, which is important, and I will put that in the notes. So if you're emailing your officials, your elected officials, you need to reference. So whenever you send an email to an elected official, make sure that you reference the act or what you're talking about, right? So I will put that in the note. I, do, I don't expect you guys to remember that. I'll also put links. So you can actually see if your um, officials are already on board. There is a link to show which ones have signed on and are already on board with this act. Uh, and then if they're not, message them, call them, email them, call them out, tag them in Facebook, do what you need to do, but make sure, you know, we got to have our voice heard. Um, what it is, is it's actually proposing to give uh, the childcare industry $50 billion in order to stabilize funding. Now, um, it, they're proposing for it to go through the CC uh, DBG, which is the Child Care Development Block Grant, okay? And I'm gonna tell you guys my opinion, 
and um, my fear about that. The Child Care Development Block Grant is the same grant that the last funding went through, right? We, uh, I believe it was $6 billion that had gone through before. In Nevada, the state of Nevada did an amazing job with the money. I am so proud of my state right now. Um, I did some consulting on this and Nevada was very concerned about child care centers and their survivability. So what they ended up doing was putting a grant that would help us pay two to three months of our operating expenses, all of our operating expenses, two to three months of it for child care centers, period, right? They And they actually had separate funding for church-based centers, which I thought was awesome. Um, and they were able to do this, okay? Every state in this country was capable of doing the same thing. But you guys can tell me in the comments, and let me make sure I can see my comments, uh, but I'm sure not all of you guys got the same thing. I know with the clients I've talked to, most, I don't know any of you guys that got the bailout that we got here in Nevada. And it really makes me sad because every state was capable of getting that bailout. Every one of them. And just so you guys know, not every state has decided 100% on what to do with the funds. Nevada just knew it was desperate. I mean, I was able, I, I'm on calls with them every week, so I made sure they understood how desperate it was, how some centers were already facing bankruptcy. And um, they, so, you know, because I advocate and my voice is out there, they're educated on what we need right so this is stuff that you guys can do too and all i've really done is reach out to the powers that be whether they're in licensing or whether they are um just whoever like find the advocacy group in your area find your local naeyc chapter see what they're doing tell them that you want to advocate for this stuff make sure that your voice is heard that's what i've done and it has gotten at least us in on the radar here in nevada and it's really helped them to understand how desperate things are here. And not just here, it's everywhere, right? So I want you guys just to keep that in perspective. I mean, here in Nevada, I, for my child care center, I got the PPP, right? And I also got about two and a half months worth of my operating expenses covered, okay? And every state had the same opportunity to do the same. Some of your states are still deciding. So if you start calling and making sure figure out, call licensing, who's in charge of this money? How do I make sure that they know what we need? How do we make sure it gets to center owners, right? To child care centers. When the federal government put the care, that money in the CARES Act for child care centers specifically, and then distributed it to the CCDBG, it was specifically supposed to go towards keeping our industry afloat. Okay, that was specifically what the money was supposed to be used for was to keep centers open. But I've seen a lot of states who are filtering it only through subsidy programs. So you're only getting as much as you have children on subsidy. Or if you don't have a subsidy, you're not getting anything at all, right? Um, and the other thing I want to tell you guys too is there was actually separate funding for those emergency stipends that you got. So if you got an emergency stipend, that got you supplies and materials like gloves, masks, and stuff like that. They had separate money for that, so this is totally different. So that's where advocating becomes so important, where we have to have our voice heard. So now keep in mind, this new bill that's coming out will cover $50 billion, but, part, but that's only the first step, because even if the federal government funds that, now we need to make sure on the state level that the state is getting it to us, right, as the child care center leaders. And that's where it's really important for us to contact even our local state officials, figure out what organizations are in charge of that money, and make sure that the money is getting to child care centers, that it's not going to private pre-K or the publicly funded pre-K, and it's not going to Head Start, which is where a lot of this ends up being trickled into. So that's why advocating is so very important and we need to make sure our voice is heard, right? So if you guys have any questions, I am going to please make sure, uh, put them in the comments. I do appreciate the interaction. I'm gonna look on my laptop because on my phone a lot of times, the comments don't come through. And so um, I'm gonna actually, so if I look down, you guys, I do apologize. 
but I am looking to see. Um, okay, so I do have some comments that my phone isn't showing me. So Karen says that's what Texas did, just subsidized care. Yes, and that is so unfortunate because every state was actually funded a different amount based on how many centers in your population. So every state had the capability of really bailing out your centers. So, you know, this is something, I don't know, for me personally, if I wasn't in Nevada, I would be angry as an owner, knowing that they could have helped me more and they didn't. You know, knowing that a lot of those, uh, that money is going into the public school system. It was not meant to go into the public school system. And that was actually one of um, Senator Masto's concerns too. Uh, and I brought it up, uh, you know, I, I'll admit, I, was, I brought it up and said, hey, when you guys do this, let's just please, is there any way you can make sure it gets into private centers? Because it's us, the small businesses, us centers that need this money, right? Public schools do not need it. They've got plenty of public funding and grants that they can apply for. We need it in the private, well, I know, right now our public school systems are hurting too, but, we need it a little bit more. They're not going to go away. We are. Our industry is literally facing decimation, right? All of the reports I've read, and there's quite a few. I know uh, Child Care Aware has put them out. Zero to Three is putting them out. Um, of course, NACI has put them out. ProCare has actually put out an excellent one. Uh, and all of the data is showing that about of any all the data ranges it's 40 to 60 percent of centers gone completely not coming back unless we get something um so let's see stephanie i don't think texas yeah apparently stephanie it doesn't look good um and i you know and the thing is like in some neighborhoods and some areas i know that even if you could take subsidized like you would love to there just aren't the kids that are on subsidies, right? Which is part of the reason this shouldn't be subsidized based. It shouldn't be subsidy based, right? Or there's just maybe a certain percentage that you can take. So this is where they just really need to step up and help us and they can. And I know Sue, hi, I see Sue just jumped on. Sue's in Pennsylvania and I know Pennsylvania was another state that did a really good job uh, of taking care of their childcare centers too. So some states did a really good job, uh, and maybe the states that didn't can look at the models. You know, I would highly encourage, you know, when you're calling, tell them, look at what Nevada did. Nevada did an awesome job, and they rolled it out really quickly. They had the plan, uh, the application process and the plan in place within 30 days. From start to finish, they started this grant and actually funded us in 60 days, which in, if you guys know anything about how the government works, that is huge. That they were able to do it so quickly so definitely be a squeaky wheel right now is time for us to really just be a squeaky wheel get their the word out there i will put notes on how, what the bill is called what the number is what you need to refer to a link to who has signed on already and a link to um how do you find your representative's contact information to make sure that you're making sure your voice is heard right now, when it comes to your local government, I would start with your child care licensing. Call them, ask them who is in charge of these funds, who do I need to call? Get the contact information. Call your local NAEYC chapter. Call, get the information from them, right? Those are the best resources. Find any advocacy groups in your area that really focus on early childhood education and your center, which in the uh, local NACI, will be able to guide you in that direction. So find your state's NACI chapter, find the closest one to you. They're gonna be able to guide you within your state's local government, but I will provide you guys the links uh, in the notes. Like I'll create notes after I post this video that will show you how to get a hold of your federal government agents. So now the other thing I wanna talk about in when it pertains to this funding, there is another fear I do have with this and I do, you know, and so this is something we do need to think about. I am voicing my opinion on it, you know, very vocally. Uh, when it comes to taking money from the federal government, it does scare me a little bit. And I do wonder how, you know, it, it, it's scary when we start depending on them. Because if you look at the public K through 12 system in the United States, we are currently ranked, uh, I believe it's 34th in the world is what we were downgraded to this year. And so that means that our public K through 12 system in this country is 
very poor quality compared to the world. We, there are 34 nations in this world that are better than us in the modern world, which honestly in the United States should not happen. We should be number one, right? But part of what happens is that there's so much bureaucracy and red tape that our schools have to go through in order just to get, just to buy a tablet or a computer. There's just so much red tape. And if you talk to a Head Start teacher, they'll tell you half their day is spent on paperwork, not the children, right? One of my biggest fears is if we become too reliant on government money and we open this door to too much government funding, they're gonna come in and start regulating us even more and we'll lose that private portion of our field, right? And we'll probably pretty much all mimic like a head start model, okay? So that's just something that I would caution all of us on that we're, yes, I know that we have this immediate need, but let's make sure we're reading these bills to make sure that this is just the immediate, you know, and they're not going to be pushing themselves into our businesses. I think part of the reason that um, the EC field is so high quality in our country is because we are private and we are competitive. Childcare in this country being private makes it so that we have to compete against each other, right? We have to make sure we're getting the children, which forces us to have higher level quality. The other thing is without having to go through all the hoops of the red tape of dealing with government agencies, we can act on things a lot faster, right? So when I was talking about how Nevada got this grant out in 60 days and that was a miracle, if you and I wanted to take our private businesses and we wanted to create a subsidy for parents within our program, we could have that done in a week, you know? We could literally, like, I know with some of you who have church boards, it would take a little bit longer, but for a private owner for myself, if I decided, I and I literally have done this, when COVID first hit, I decided I was going to do um, a sliding scale and come up with a program where I could let some parents off the hook for paying me when they weren't in attendance and whatnot. So I literally created a form in one day and I created a system in a day so that I could accommodate these families, right? If I were in the public school system, it would take 60 days, 90 days, right? 60 days is a miracle if you're in a government agency. So that is one of the things I really fear about um, the bailout. And so far from what I'm reading, I don't see any language in the Child Care is Essential Bill where it opens the door for us to become part of the public system. But I did read an article earlier that some of the legislation that's coming up in the next election is looking at making us public. They're also encouraging corporations to start their own child care centers. And so those things do scare me a lot. I don't want to see um, child care become part of the public school system. Our public school system in this country is in desperate need of reform. Again, we're 34th in the world. It's not something to be proud of. I don't want to see early childhood education being eaten up by that because our quality, frankly, is so much better than the K through 12's quality. The quality we put out there is just so much higher. The standards we're held to, right? I think we're seeing that now. The public schools cannot handle opening. I know in my area, they can't handle the capacity of children. They're not opening to full capacity. They're trying to figure out how they're going to do this, yet they're asking us to take their children, yet they're asking us to expand. They're asking us to figure out this problem. Why is that? It's because we have better quality. It's because we know how to run things more efficiently. We don't have so much red tape we have to jump through in order to make things work. And I know in my state, child care centers have an extremely low ratio of COVID because our sanitation guidelines and procedures are so good. The schools can't keep up with us when it comes to how well we manage sanitation procedures, right? The public school system just, they can't keep up with us on that. So now they're looking to us to fill in these gaps and to bring these children in because of our quality standards. If we become a part of the public school system, we lose that. And I just can't stress that to you. I know it sounds great to think of being subsidized and having the money 
coming in from the government to pay for spots so we can pay our teachers more, so we can accomplish more. But I think if we look at the big picture, how much more do we lose, right? By losing that private entity. Look at what's happened to our K through 12 system in this nation. You could be in the best state in the country and you're still 34th in the world. Okay, just let that sink in. Finland and Sweden are number one in the world and their schools are actually modeled pretty much like our child care centers. They are neurological based uh, and they, they basically follow child development. So really just think about that. I mean, it's something that I know it sounds great and we always think about like, we need to be funded, we need funding, we need funding. But remember, with funding comes government regulations. They're not going to give us money without regulating us. So I want you guys to kind of keep the two separated. The emergency funds for the uh, Child Care is Essential is a bailout, get us through this time. But we really need to be cautious when we hear like, okay, we're going to start subsidizing this field. Two separate things. Keep those separated. The emergency funds to get us through this time and permanent funding. Two separate things. Permanent funding comes with regulations. It comes with us losing that private sector of our child care industry, right? And when the government takes things over, the quality tends to plummet, to be completely honest with you. So some of you guys may disagree agree with me on that, but it is what it is. If you guys agree, feel free to share this video. I think this is something that we just really need to get out there. I think a lot more people need to hear it in our industry. Uh, so I hope you guys got some good information. Let me just check really quick to see if I have any comments. Um, nope, it looks like we're good. And of course, if you're watching the replay, feel free to ask questions. Uh, I will link some of the people in to the comments that help me with advocacy work so that they can help us answer some questions. So I hope everybody has a great rest of your day and a great weekend since tomorrow's Friday. And I will see you guys on Monday morning when I'm back with Future. Bye.